Welcome to the Parkin Report. My name is Seamus Riley. Joining me in this segment of the Parkin Report is uh, Dr. Nancy Sutton, Dean of Arts and Sciences here at Parkland College. Welcome to the Parkland Report. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Well, you know, academic services underwent uh, a reorganization and created the back to sort of a divisional structure and your structural part is Arts and Sciences. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, academic uh, areas that are included under your sure. Your area. Arts and Sciences incorporates five departments. We have Humanities, Fine and Applied Arts, Natural Sciences, Mathematics, and Social Sciences and Human Services. Most of our courses are the transfer courses, the courses that students would take before they proceed on to a four-year institution. We have a few career areas, then we have advanced courses in certain areas, like obviously psychology and in the sciences. So we sort of, we're a, a section that touches almost every student that comes into Parkland. So the, uh, the, the latest national reports is talking quite a lot about the influence of community colleges in terms right. of uh, pathways right. uh, to, to the various universities. We are the largest transfer institution for the University of yes. Illinois. Um, so a lot of our students come here and they sort of say, I'm going to take a few classes before I transfer to U of I mm -hmm. or ISU or Eastern or Southern or whatever. Um, but there's, there's more to, to, to that than just taking a few classes. Right. We, we would like our students to be a little more intentional. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, people can take classes and transfer, but optimally what might students be wanting to think about before they do that? Well, the primary thing that students should think about is that whatever they decide they want to do, whatever degree they want, there's a certain set of general education courses that any institution is going to expect, a certain amount of whether it's English, composition, you usually have to take some physical and life science, there's social sciences. And when you go to a community college such as Parkland, you can complete a package of those. So for example, in Illinois, you can complete 38 credits that is the general education core curriculum. That is guaranteed to transfer to any of the Illinois uh, four-year institutions. And it means that students can take the gen eds here at Parkland in usually with smaller class sizes, working directly with their professors, and have an opportunity to experience a lot of that before they transfer on to the four years. So we would like students to think about completing the general education package and then if they stay and complete a degree, an associate's degree with us, they will also have a foundation for whatever they decide they want to go into. A lot of students don't know what they want to do, particularly students straight out of out of high school. Mm -hmm. And so when you take classes in the arts and sciences, you can sort of test and try things. You can try a little bit of the psychology, a little of the sociology. You can go into various sciences. You can test literature, the humanities, um, foreign languages, things mm -hmm. of that nature, and decide what you want to do. And the majority of what you take will transfer, if not in your area, at least as an elective. And so we offer students an opportunity to really get that first two years under their belt and then have a better idea. We also have very um, intentional advising. A lot of our faculty will do advising, helping students make decisions about careers or choices that they mm -hmm. want as they try things. Um, the pathways you talk about, our pathways to Illinois, we actually are unique in that we are the only pathway to Illinois that actually lets students take classes on the University of Illinois campus at the same time. Right. They take up to five credits at the U of I while they're taking their classes here. And so we have a very good working relationship there. If students do choose to transfer before they finish the degree here, they can actually transfer their credits back from the four-year institution and still receive the associate's degree, which means that then on their resume or their CV, they'll have not just their bachelor's degree, but also their associate's degree. So there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, I, I want to talk on, about two things generally. One is that 50% uh, of all students in the United States who, who earn a baccalaureate degree uh, have attended community Correct. college. Uh, a new report just that which was a massive survey of data for out of SESI uh, which showed that students who graduated with a degree, in other words who earned the associate's mm -hmm. degree prior to transfer had a much better chance of achieving the baccalaureate within the within the time. Right. So th there's, it's not just that it's a nicety or we'd like people to do right. it. There's a practical exactly. re reason for doing it. And, and one of the things is that when you take classes at, for example, at Parkland, the class size is smaller. And our faculty, that is, teaching is what they do. They, that is their first career, their first love. They spend a lot of time working with the students to help them understand what it means to be a college student, what you need to do to be successful. We have a lot of resources that, that teach students how to do the research, how to budget their time, how to be successful so that when they go to the, onto the four-year institution, they won't have the same 
maybe stress and pressures that a lot of students have when they go straight to the mm -hmm. four-year. College is often overwhelming to someone who has never been there, particularly for our traditional students. And so we have the ability to help them gain the skills they need to be successful so that when they do go on to the four-year institution, they have a much better chance of success. I mean, I think it's a really important point in terms of the quality of the education. I mean, I think we, we often hear emphasize the quantity or the cost of right. the education, or, or and which in some cases I think sort of a little bit sort of diminishes right. the, the perceived value of a community college. But I mean, I think what people need to know about Parkland and all community colleges, but Parkland in particular, is that we have excellent faculty who are fully qualified, who have credentialed, right. in many cases are working practitioners yes. in their field or have worked as practitioners Definitely. in the field. Mm -hmm. So it's not just somebody who sort of understands the theory of it, but in like, for example, I'm thinking of our fine arts yep. who are incredible uh, working artists, uh, our, our sociology and anthropology folks who mm -hmm. have done work mm -hmm. in the field uh, and can bring that life experience to our students um, so that our students not just get the convenience and the, and the, and the quality of the, of the institution as a whole, but that ac actual incredible learning mm -hmm. experience in the class. And you actually bring up a really good point that not only are our faculty practitioners, that this is, this is what they do, but our students get hands-on experience in the classroom. And a lot of times in the general education area, in the trans the, those theoretical classes, students will spend a lot of time with the book and not a lot of time with the hands-on. But almost every one of our classes provides hands-on, interactive, experiential moments. Uh, in our forensics classes, students that are taking science, general education science, will actually do hands-on working with a lot of the materials that forensic scientists do. So it can be a very exciting and interesting class. The, you mentioned the, the uh, art faculty. Even in art history and art appreciation, the students will actually work with various mediums so that they learn a little more about that experience. Radio and television, it isn't just the theory. We have the radio and the TV station so the students get the hands-on experience. They don't get that in their first two years at a four-year institution. Very few, if any, of the four-year institutions in the state of Illinois have the same applied um, opportunities that we really can give to students. And again, just to sort of go back to the, the transfer piece, because I think it's one of the most confusing things for students in that they, they're aware that they can transfer credits from a community college to the university. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're trying to underscore, and, and I think part of one of your goals, is to explain to people the value of the completion of the general yes. education package. What most students don't realize is that, yes, it is true that almost every class you take at Parkland uh, can and will transfer mm -hmm. to a four-year institution, public or private. Right. But there is no guarantee unless you have gotten the full packet right. that all 38 hours will transfer right. and that the receiving institution is required to accept. Right. right. So you have the gen ed package that transfers, but then if you complete the full 60 credits of the associate's degree, that also is accepted and you, you go walk into the four-year institution at the junior level. And so there are advantages to finishing and following through and completing things. It allows the student at the four-year institution then to really focus on the, the courses that they've decided are going to take them to the profession they want. One of the other big pieces uh, in the news and has been in the news forever is the importance of the, the liberal arts core mm -hmm. to what actually employers are saying. I mean, there was a massive you know, 23 million uh, job ads uh, the only specific technical skill that the author identified as being you must have was ability to use Microsoft Excel. Right. Everything else was core liberal arts, communication, mm -hmm. uh, writing ability, listening ability, critical thinking critical skills, thinking creativity skills. is yes. one that a lot of employers are looking for. The job, jobs change so quickly these days and people have to be able to adapt and the ability to, to learn Mm -hmm. to, uh, to constantly keep up. I, I often refer to college as the opportunity to train your brain mm -hmm. so that you can learn forever. That you have the, the skills and ability to know how to research, to know how to figure things out for yourself, to find information, and to work with other people. Team building is another one that, that employers Huge. are really looking right. for people who can work with others. So in almost all of our classes, you'll find the faculty bring the students together to work on, on projects. Group projects are always the bane of every student's existence, 
but actually in the in the right environment with the right faculty you can learn a lot about how to work with others you know and in a world where the projection is that almost every profession that we think of as being stable in the world now will be completely right. different including medicine which has been a, a long-standing traditional piece that is now going to be engineering it is going to be biotech it's yep. not going to be your traditional I mean your iPhone is going to be more useful to you than your GP in terms of monitoring your performance so more than ever we're looking for that flexibility that ability to adapt, that mm -hmm. ability to work collaboratively and communicate across cultures. Right. Because the other big piece that liberal arts gives us is that experience of the diversity of what the world experiences. Right. And so you find that with a lot of the uh, general education courses more and more there's a, a need to incorporate an element of a global perspective. And so there are even requirements. Now we have the non-Western requirements, and there will be even greater requirements. Uh, many of the courses that are accepted in the Gen Ed package now are, are expected to have more than one cultural element included in them. And so the goal would be that, that what you learn in that those, those first two years of college is really how to learn for the rest of your life, how to adapt, how to use resources, how to use the tools at your disposal to continually, if you have to, reinvent yourself. Right, and general education becomes something not that you have to do, but that you're actually looking forward to doing right. and that is really going to be something right. that's a special experience every right. time you're at Portland. One thing our faculty will do is they will try to make as much as possible, make every class that a student takes relevant to what the student is interested in. Thanks for being here today. We'll be right back after this short break. Perimeter Road Sound Recordings is an on-campus, student-staffed record label here at Parkland College. Um, the ultimate goal um, and, and really the, the primary idea was give students an opportunity to get some music business experience outside of what they might get in their coursework. Here at Perimeter Road, I'm not just the lead engineer or just, uh, you know, the events planner. You know, I also work with social media, I work with design, I work with the business management aspect of it. So I get a little taste of everything. I really love being with the students and interacting with them. They've got a lot of creativity and a lot of intelligence. It's fun to be part of that creative process with them. Uh, they might be looking for advice and looking for direction, but in reality, if you kind of give them a little bit of a free hand, it's amazing what they can come up with on their own. This first semester was all about getting all of the sessions in, getting all the, the, the recordings done, and working on mixing those songs into something that is professional quality. Once we finish recording that EP and release it, having that actual EP release show where we get to see all of our hard work come to life. Once I'm getting behind the scenes and seeing it, how much really goes into making a song it is incredible how much tiny little details and all these little things, which is great because the students are getting that first-hand experience and hands-on experience, learning that. Every moment that I've spent within Perma Road Sound Recordings has been extremely fulfilling and extremely exciting and just engaging in a lot of ways I couldn't even have imagined at the beginning. I see nothing but wonderful things in the future for Perimeter Road Sound Recordings and I hope to really build it up and make a name for, for ourselves here on campus and in the community and um, I see it as a very valuable um, asset to the college as we move forward in the future. Welcome to the Parkland Report. Joining me today, Dean Geiken, Leslie Gray, talking about Perimeter Road Sound Recordings. What is Perimeter Road Sound Recordings? Perimeter Road Sound Recordings, or for short, PRSR, is a record label here at Parkland College. It is student staffed. Uh, myself and Adam Porter are the uh, uh, advisors, the coordinators of the label, and it is a student staffed record label where we record, promote, and um, uh, basically do everything that a record label would do in the real world on a much smaller scale and uh, allow the uh, uh, students to have an opportunity to work in that type of environment. We've got a really nice sound recording studio uh, in the C-Wing here at Parkland <coughs> College and uh, we just got done releasing our second album which is a compilation album of Parkland students who are, uh, presented all their original um, original work and we recorded it, mixed it, and released it. It's now available on 
uh, Spotify, iTunes, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, all that stuff. Very good. Leslie, how did you get involved with PRSR? I hate acronyms, but we're going to go <laughs> with that because it's easier than saying right. Perimeter Road Sound Recordings. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, it was, I first heard about it um, almost about a year ago, actually. Um, I just saw it inside a newspaper. It was kind of sort of hang up over inside of the union, and I was kind of interested inside of it. I initially at first wasn't entirely too sure because I thought it was going to be a program that was pretty much just going to run into the ground. But then after a year or so, I started, you know, getting in cahoots with Adam Porter, who is also one of the faculty members that run it. Um, and we've been talking back and forth about doing it and so forth. And then eventually, you know, I signed off my paperwork and here we are. So what is your uh, what is your focus as a student here at Parkland College? What are you focused on? Well, right now I'm doing associates. Uh, inside of a fine arts degree. Um, just pretty much gen eds for it right now. Um, hopefully I'll be able to transfer out. I'm thinking about going to Columbia or maybe even to U of I and studying inside of vocal performance as well as audio engineering as a second major. Um, but, um, but besides that, I mean, right now this record label is pretty much, you know, the hands-on work that I'm really looking for. Inside of so it. Dean, this is part of the sort of Parkland Entrepreneurial Network sort of, yes. uh, of sort of umbrella, general umbrella, I know right. it's ridiculous you know, within the final applied arts, but that sort of notion that we want to give students a, sort of a, an opportunity to work in an entrepreneurial environment uh, with understanding how you take something from concept uh, all the way through the process to a product at the end of it. Uh, so uh, how did you go about sort of uh, conceiving of it and, and getting the students connected uh, into it? Well, okay, it, you're absolutely right. It is uh, kind of a hands-on ground from the ground up type of process. Um, originally, the idea of having a record label was just kind of an idea that floated around. There was a, uh, a recording class here mm -hmm. at Parkland College in the past, but uh, it was off-site and when the instructor left, that was the end of the class. Sure. And so, uh, through a lot of really great uh, um, luck and planning, we were able to get this record label off the ground. And we've got Adam Porter is the instructor of the uh, Music 161 and 162 classes. And so we kind of coupled his ability of, of teaching that class with a record label. So uh, the students come in, they don't have to be in the recording class. It helps, and we do have some students who are in the record label who are in part of the class. Um, so they come in and we select a project. We want to sign a band. So we put the word out to local bands to submit their stuff and then the students uh, with the direction of Adam and I we we select a band and we sign them we ask them if they'd be willing to sign with us and then we hit the ground running we set up a schedule of recording sessions we start designing how we're going to promote this band uh, both on social media and in hard form and things like that and then the students kind of take over we give them their marching orders mm -hmm. so to speak each week and then they hit the ground running and and you know schedule the times for the recording sessions and such. So Leslie, primarily this is basically like a, a recording studio. It's a sound recording studio. Mm -hmm. You get a talent, a piece of talent to come in to mm -hmm. work with, and then you have to sort of figure out how to do it. So mm -hmm. I mean, there's a there's the audio technology piece, and there's the soundboard and the mm -hmm. mixing board. Talk to me a little bit about how, as a, as a group of students, you go about sort of thinking about. How do you manufacture this sound? How do you bend the sound? How do you how do you remain faithful to what the talent is bringing in? Okay, well, um, as an artist myself, um, I mean, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of these students. Um, a lot of the students that are inside the record label are also taking the Music 161 class with Adam Porter, which, you know, as Dean said, is a great, huge help. Um, and like he said, they pretty much just kind of sort of just let us run with it, and we pretty much work on it hands on. Um, I mean, pretty much, I mean, we kind of sort of just kind of work with the artists themselves, especially with the bands. So the bands so far have been great. I mean, so far we recorded two bands and um, they've been really generous in, in helping us, you know, on saying, okay, this is the kind of sound that we want. Um, pretty much, how do you want to go about it? Like, is there a certain way that we have to do it and so forth? And we would pretty much elaborate on it and say, okay, so we know that we need to do this and this and that in order to get to that point. Um, pretty much, I mean, it's almost as if we're working for the band. Um, and then at the same token, you know, they're also 
you know, kind of sort of working for us as well because, you know, it's give and take inside of the studio. Right, it's an organic process, mm -hmm. right? Because, Very I mean, much. sometimes a band will come in and they have a sense in their head of what they sound like, mm -hmm. but then you as a recording studio uh, think, you know, there's this other element of sound that we want to bring out, this other element of their performance. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about how, as an artist yourself, working in this environment has helped you as an artist. Well, me as an artist, it's helped me great a ton. For one, um, I've never been inside a studio space such as this one. <laughs> um, most of, you know, pretty much my musicianship is my performance. I am a performer before anything. So um, being out on stage um, in front of, you know, about a thousand people, you know, that's, that's all I've known. So being inside the studio space was a little bit different. It helps me to grow inside of understanding what kind of business that I don't really want to get into um, studio wise. Um, I do want to become a studio artist, um, if you could say. Um, I want to be able to produce an album and so forth. So being inside the studio really actually gave me a sense of, you know, the amount of time <laughs> as well as work that goes into it. And then it also helps you to be able to realize like, hey, okay, like your people skills, social skills, I should say, is something that you have to work on too, because you have to be able to work with the students there, um, especially with the engineers, you know, as well as producers that work inside the studio. And then help to craft this type of sound that you want. And for me, being inside the studio really helped me to be able to craft my sound. You know, like a lot of some of the top performers ever, you know, I'm thinking people like Prince who were like brilliant sound engineers, oh, yeah. understood their played all the instruments on his first album, wrote all the songs yeah. for his first <laughs> album. But I mean, that is part and parcel of, of remaining faithful to the product that you want to create, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, and so this gives you a sort of an added sort of advantage as you sort of pursue your career, mm -hmm. both in terms of whatever you end up doing professionally, <laughs> whether it be a, as a performer or as a recording artist, I've been sort of interested over the years to see how many top performing artists are in fact also engineers. I mean, and, yeah. and they flip back and forth. Oh, well, definitely. Uh, me personally, I mean, I think that that's a great asset to have as an artist to be able to understand um, the music side of it. For me personally, it's much more about the feel of it. That's where I feel that my authentic authenticity, oh, well, I don't know exactly what the word is, uh, <laughs> but um, it makes me authentic for yes. the sound of it, what I feel. I write all of my songs. All of my songs are written. I play guitar and piano, so I compose uh, the backing track for it and so forth. Sure. Now, when I get inside the studio, then that's you know where the more technical engineering side of it comes into play. When we you know you're coming up, we're talking about mics, we're talking about densities and messing around with vocals, and then we're also talking about you know what else to put on sure. to the track and so forth. Um, it's a great experience overall, you know, just being inside the studio, working inside of this recording label is just a great, awesome experience for me. And as an artist, you kind of sort of just get that hands-on, you know, kind of approach and feel for it. Dean, I refer to this generation of students as the creative class because it's the first time in history that a young person can, whether it be in writing or film or in music, that they actually have the tools available to be able to produce the product. Now, I mean, you're obviously giving them a much higher level, um, and so it's exciting. Uh, I know you had a, a performance recently in mm -hmm. the student union to sort of showcase some of the, the, the artists that you've been working with, with PRSR. Um, were you, like I was, blown away with the talent that we have here at Parkland College? Absolutely. Um, as you said, they are very creative and they have those tools readily available to them, uh, either in or outside of an educational institution. And when uh, we put the performance together, um, we had basically a groundwork that we wanted to, to go with and you know, a, a, a little bit of a, a format, some bones to the uh, performance and then we let the students develop how it was going to go. And Leslie was one of the performers. Um, we didn't tell him what he needed to do other than his song. And uh, the energy just built from one artist to the next. And the students who were in the background, you know, running the live mix or setting up the equipment and stuff like that, they took their training and their knowledge and their imagination and their creativity and put it all together. And we had a really awesome experience there. Yeah, we did. It, it, was, it was very organic. It, it wasn't, you know, we didn't have a, you must do this, you must do this, we have to meet this deadline or mark or whatever. 
we just kind of let it flow, and I think that was part of the success of it. It's, with all due respect, it's not a primo, uh, premier sort of uh, performance space. I mean, it's, no, it's, it's not. not. A, it's got a percentage of art, but it, there's lots of difficulties in that area with sound, for example. Right. And right. I was very impressed with the quality of the sound. Yes. Um, um, it, they had to work around that. It is what it is, where we performed it uh, on, in the student union. Um, but. But that's Be that as it may, it came out. It right. came out wonderful. And that's part of the lesson we're teaching the students. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're recording something live, you have to figure out what the, you know, what the context of the surroundings and environment are, and you've got to make the adjustments. So mm -hmm. you right. want to make the artist so sound good. Um, you know, we talked, uh, you know, about the the benefit of the practicality of the the hands-on experience that students get, but but. In, you know whether or not students uh, out of PRS or go on to become performing artists, or whether they even work in a performance arting artist kind of context in a recording studio. These are are really great skills that they're learning uh, in terms of understanding lots of complex pieces. The biggest being working with other people, um, and and basically small group cooperation and learning how to deal with you know uh, situations that aren't ideal. You know the world is not perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, th this is a fantastic uh, uh, way to sort of wrap up a, a large conversation about the benefits of all the things that we do in our liberal arts mm -hmm. sort of environment here at Parkland College and, and how we are entrepreneurial. And congratulations to you both, and thanks so much for being here with Parkland Report. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. That's it for this edition of Parkland Report. We'll see you back here next time. Days go by